Hi, my name is Lauren Brown. I'm a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, my practice is AccuBalance Wellness Center, um, and it's located in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's called AccuBalance.ca. And today I'm going to ask a few questions to Dr. Paul Magarelli. He's a reproductive endocrinologist. His practice is in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, Dr. Magarelli, um, I've, I've gotten to know Magarelli over, the, over many years. He's spoken at the Integrated Fertility Symposium in Vancouver. He's offered lectures online um, and in person to acupuncturists and naturopaths to integrate with uh, reproductive medicine, IVF, et cetera. He travels around the world to lecture. Um, um, he's got chapters in medical textbooks. And he's done research and continues to do research on integrating acupuncture and other natural modalities into IVF with the hopes of increasing the IVF success. So I thought since this Infertility Awareness Week, we actually call it Infertility Awareness Month now, the month of April here in Canada, that we'd have this discussion with Dr. Magarelli. And actually, we're going to keep these videos up because even though it's, it's, it's because it's Infertility Awareness Week and Month, this information is valuable to any man or woman who are trying to conceive any time of year. So, Dr. Magarelli, welcome, and thank you for making the time for our discussion today. My pleasure, Lauren, and yes, it has been a wonderful journey with you and the acupuncture community over the past, I think it's more than 10 years now. You're around the Chinese medicine community quite a bit because of your lecturing and your research with acupuncture. Um, I'm curious from the Western perspective, something that has been observed in Chinese medicine and documented 2,000 plus years ago, and it goes along with this saying, nourish the soil, nourish the soil before you plant the seed. And the idea behind this is that preconception, um, the months before conception happens, is important in creating the health blueprint of this future sh child. And not, uh, not only that for child, but many generations. And I know you've been looking into some of this research, you've lectured on this. Can you share a bit, um, has the, is the evidence catching up with this? Is the evidence confirming what Chinese medicine stated so long ago that it's not just how healthy you are two weeks before conception happens, but um, several months before. And I think what, what they call nourish the soul before you plant the seed in the West, they're calling it epigenetics. I'd just like to hear kind of where this is going from the Western medical perspective. Well, you just stole my lead. I was just going to say that today, we, that terminology is called epigenetics, uh, on top of genetics. Um, the, the, the Darwinian model of, of evolution states that you are, your life is dictated by your genes. The Lamarckian model, uh, which was actually predated Darwin of evolution, was that something, the environment influences the expression of the, he didn't know the word genes at the time, which allows for um, beneficial and pathologic impact on that animal or human uh, being. So the term epigenetics, the way of thinking of it is, is that there are proteins that quote every uh, DNA strand, which is where your genes are, that are sensitive to the environment to every aspect, physically, emotionally, psychologically, biologically, quantum. There are many things that now we understand influence the expression of the, uh, of the uh, genes as opposed to the dictation by the genes of the expression. So what does that mean? It means that every and anything that a couple can do to create one, I'd say a healthy body is a fertile body. Anything that they can do to to replenish the natural status of healthy cells. Well, how is that? Well, of course, alcohol, tobacco, and street drugs, although permissible for adults, everyone knows are, are potentially harmful, even in small quantities. So any preparation is important. Nutritional status. Many of us have been sort of duped into this idea of good carbs, bad carbs, fats are bad, you know, and so what has happened is we've become a box culture or a carbohydrate addicted culture, which of course has led to obesity and pathologic metabolic states. Simply returning to what your great grandparents did for consumption, which was a high fat, because fat was cheap, moderate to low protein, because protein was expensive, and little or no access to carbs, they didn't have 7-Elevens and, 
and, um, and shopping malls. So if we can go and change our nutritional status um, from one of, of carb loading to balanced nutrition, then you're going to see the cells themselves um, um, manage, manage their environments better. So there, there is an understanding today of transgenerational epigenetics. Here is the kicker. Um, we can now, and I've been doing this now with many of my patients over 35, we have been caught up in this, the egg ages, and therefore that's why you see aneuploidy and loss. Well, it's actually the egg is somewhat um, uh, immune to the environment or else you'd use up all your eggs when you turn 13. So the eggs are called into action, so they estivate or sleep until they're called into action each month, and we call into action about 1,000. So what we now understand is if you replenish the follicle, the egg house, ATP from, comes from mitochondria, which is, which is impacted by growth hormones and insulin-like growth factors, which is influenced by uh, uh, the hormone DHEA, which is influenced by oxidation, so antioxidants. If you can create a recipe to rejuvenate, and I hate that term because it's now a sort of a, a, a Google term, but to, to replenish and enrich the microenvironment of the follicle, you're going to see, and we are now seeing, fewer aneuploid embryos. So as much as I love my colleagues in the acupuncture community, I used to fight with them when they said they can improve a quality. Well, they had an idea, but what I'm suggesting is that traditional Chinese medicine, nutrients, better lifestyle choices, and, and will replenish and renew the egg house so that it feeds the ATP to the embryo, because to the egg. Because why? The egg itself cannot use its own ATP until after eight, nine, ten days of development. So that egg's development is dependent on a follicle that's nourished. That's what acupuncture does for, for many reasons, including better blood flow, nutrients like antioxidants, DHEA, growth, uh, and then hormones like growth hormone, insulin-like growth factors, antioxidants, um, vitamin D3, vitamin C, which are also antioxidants as well as required by the cell membranes. All of these things are pivotal and critical to the development of a euploid embryo, which will allow the best reproductive potential for that couple. And so just for the listeners, euploid embryo would be a chromosomally normal embryo. Sure. Um, and this is that whole concept of nourish the soul before you plant the seed. And the metaphor um, I use, the metaphors are never perfect. That's why they're metaphors. But to explain to patients, and I, I don't know if you've ever heard me share this, so I want to kind of do this now and get your feedback on this, is I compare it to like a plant in soil. And the plant, the root is the egg, and the soil is the follicle of the environment, right? The surrounding, the cellular environment. And if the plant is neglected, it looks like it's ready for the garbage. But sometimes you can add water, add fertilizer, remove it from direct sunlight, and the plant regains its vigor and gives off fruits and flowers. The plant always had the potential, but the environment, the soil in which it was in, was suboptimal, so it wasn't reaching its potential. So we didn't have to do donor roots, donor eggs, right? All we had to do is nourish the soil. And so I share with patients, we can't tell the egg quality, um, but we can do, all we can do is work with your soil. And so that's where we talk about diet, lifestyle, your exercise, your sleep, stress reduction, using acupuncture for herbs. And then you and I have had discussions about low-level laser therapy because it actually brings down oxidative stress, improves mitochondria function, increases blood flow. Um, and the Western side that you're using in your practice sounds like you're doing some hormone treatment, uh, growth hormone um, DHEA and stuff. So everything is about that cellular environment to impact the follicular environment, which is going to impact the egg and therefore help optimize its quality. And I guess the, the, the point you're making um, is that at Reproductive Medicine and Fertility Centers and my program specifically, we don't take, we, we don't make assumptions. We try to look at the data and then we, we set up a small internal experiment with clinical trial. And then we look at the data. We did that for PGTA. We did it for freeze cycles. Last year, we did it for this, what we call the uh, growth hormone CMAP protocol. It's growth hormone 
and then the Credenda Magarelli Acupuncture Protocol, and we're hopefully going to be uh, presenting that at a couple of meetings this year. But the whole idea is you should ask your doctors, have you looked at the data and have you seen it in your own practice? And I think something that um, bothered me initially with acupuncturists was this idea of acupuncture works. Who cares what the data says? It works. In other words, just ask the patients. And um, I have a little bit of a, of, a, of a different take on that. It's let's see within my clinic if it works and then apply it to a broader population. And then sometimes I don't have an explanation. Keep searching for an explanation. And that's what we've been doing on the acupuncture front. We're now doing it on the growth hormone front. front. I hope we continue to do the work with laser. That's intriguing to me because that will certainly um, impact the mitochondrial uh, function. Um, but I think as a community and as patients, we should team together to say, even if we don't have the answer, if there's been enough success, and, and again, traditional Chinese medicine has done this for thousands of years, then maybe there's something to it which we don't understand. And I think it's, it behooves us all to work together towards that goal. And that's why it's always been a privilege, you know, for the infertility, you know, the integrated fertility symposium for me to be able to talk with my colleagues as well as my challengers, because it gives me the opportunity to learn more and hopefully provide a Western perspective on this whole area of how do you, when you affect your, your, your egg and sperm, how do you affect your baby and your baby's baby, which is called transgenerational epigenetics? which, by the way, I'm going to be talking about at your conference this year. Dr. Magarello will be at the Integrated Fertility Symposium April 2019, and that's a um, big part of his lecture.